Welcome to SharePoint Pittsburgh's first tutorial on InfoPath 2010. InfoPath provides us with a versatile way to create forms for SharePoint. In today's lesson, Lesson 1, InfoPath 2010, Creating a Basic Form, we'll continue with our fictitious ice cream company, Happy Scoops, and create an order form for ice cream that people can submit online. We will go over many important parts of InfoPath, including form structure, fields, and rules. In this lesson's follow-up, InfoPath 2010 Lesson 2, How SharePoint and InfoPath Work Together, we will demonstrate what you can do with an InfoPath form once you have created it. So let's get started. First, we will open Microsoft InfoPath Designer 2010. You can see that there are several options available for creating new forms. For today's purpose, we go to Blank Form and hit Design Form. We have a very basic form here. We can make this as simple or as complex as we want. We can make the form longer. We can edit the title text just like in Word or Excel. We'll call this Happy Scoops Order Form. Notice the content area is blank. When we click into it, Table Tools appears at the top. We can click on Split Cells. We want two columns and seven rows. Click OK. We can use the tools at the top to draw a table or to erase. I'm going to erase a few of the lines that I created. Now we can hit Escape to exit out of the erasing mode. Let's add the text Flavor, click in the next cell, and add the text Quantity. And we're going to want this in scoops because it is for ice cream. We'll skip this cell and this one. Now we'll want the person's name who's making the order. So we type in your name, then we want your phone number. These look really small, so let's select the entire form, go to Home, and we can make the text larger, just like in Word. Now it's time to add some controls to this form. Notice the box up at the top labeled Controls. Click on the area you want the control. For flavor, we're going to want a drop-down list of all of our flavors. To edit the list, we click on Control Tools, Control Properties. To use best practice naming conventions on the fields, we'll name this DDL Flavors, where DDL is for drop-down list. We do not want this text box to be blank. Let's enter the choices manually by clicking Add. Our first flavor will be Chocoholic. OK. Our second flavor will be Rockin' Raspberry. OK. Third flavor, Spring Strawberry. The next, April Apple. And lastly, May Mango. Let's click OK. For quantity, we want a text box, but for numerical data. We click on Text Box. We can edit the properties by right-clicking and selecting Text Box Properties. Our field name will be TXT Quantity. The data type will be Whole Number. We do not want a default value, and this cannot be blank. In this next field, we want a button that will calculate the price of ice cream. Let's go to the top and select Button. We can change the size of this button to suit our needs. Let's edit this button's properties. We want this button to have rules, which we will show next. The label will be Calculate Price. The ID will be BTN Price. OK. Now we'll want this price to appear in the window beside the button. Let's add a text box. Let's shorten this box 
so we can add a dollar sign in front of it. Now let's edit this field. The field name will be TXT price. Everything else looks good. Okay. Now let's set some rules for this button so that it actually does what it says. To add rules, we go to Control Tools, Add Rules. Now when this button is clicked, we want to set a field's value. The field that we want to set will be the price field. We want the value to be the number of scoops times 50 cents per scoop. We will insert a field or group. We want quantity times 50 cents. We can verify the formula. Looks good. OK. Notice the rules box on the right that we can use to quickly manage our rules. Now in this next area, I want to give the customer the option to add fruit on top of their ice cream. So we're going to add a checkbox. Check here if you would like fruit on top. All right, now we're not going to just give away fruit. So let's add some rules that add a dollar to the price when they check the box. We're going to add a new rule that is an action. Our condition will be that the field is equal to true. We're going to add, set a field's value, the field will be the price field, and the value will be our old formula quantity times 0.5 plus 1. Okay. Oh, let's verify the formula. Good. Now we need another rule because if the person unchecks the box, the dollar will still be there. This time we want it to be false. We'll add set a field's value again, the same field, the price field, and the value this time is going to be quantity times 0.5. No minus, no plus, just the same old thing. Next, let's add a text box for the person's name. Oops, I see that I forgot to change the name of the checkbox from field 4. So let's do that real quick. We want it to be chk fruit underscore option. Okay, good. Now we'll do the same thing for field 5. We'll call this one txt name. Great. Let's do the same thing for the phone number. We'll add a text box. Let's edit the text box properties. The name is going to be txt phone underscore number. Great. Here's the last part. We have to receive this form somehow, right? So let's make a submit button that emails Happy Scoops the order form. Let's edit this button. All right, the label is going to be click here to submit your order. All right, now let's change the ID to BTN submit. Okay, now we're going to need a rule here, a new rule creates an action. It runs when the button is clicked. We're going to add submit data and let's add a data connection. We're going to create a new connection to submit data. We want to submit the data as an email message. There are a lot of other options as you can see. Click Next. We want to email this to ourselves, so we're going to make, well, this is a fictitious address, but we'll have it emailed to happyscoops at sharepointpittsburgh.org. The subject will be your new order. Great.
Next. All right, let's send this data as an attachment called form. You can also use a formula here. Next. And this type of thing is going to be called email submit. Next and OK. Perfect. Now we're done. We just have to publish the form. But first, let's check that it works. We can go to this little button called Preview, which takes us to Microsoft InfoPath Filler. So we're going to go through, like we're ordering, calculate the price, two and a half, just like we thought. We add, subtract, fruit, awesome. OK, let's put our name. My name is Caroline, and let's just put a few numbers here. All right, submit your order. And look at that. It's going to make an email, but we can't actually send it because it's a fake email address. Some rules were not applied because we didn't send the email, but technically, this works. So that's it. Why don't you see if you can figure out the error that we still have on our form, and next time I'll show you how to fix it. All right, thanks for joining us. We hope you'll join us for our next tutorial where we'll publish this form and show you how InfoPath and SharePoint work together.